Hello and welcome back to the Handstand Cast with me, Emmett Lewis, and my co-host Mikael Christiansen. How are things going, Mikael? They are about the same time as last time you asked me, I think, uh, yeah. whenever that was. I don't have short time or, or short-term memory whatsoever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I am sitting here folding tiny birds and I'm almost at 1,000. I think I have 972 birds. So during this podcast, I might actually finish like Ooh. 18 more. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll do 18 more in an hour or so. Let's see. So, <laughs> yeah, if you hear so many uh, re- rustling away, can you do them blindfolded yet? Yeah, of course. Sure you can, I mean, yeah. It's, I mean, but even like the small one centimeter ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I barely look when I do these ones now. I look down two times, but I don't need to because I can, like basically you, you can just make an extra fold and then you fold corner to corner uh, or like, um, so you don't really need to look. It's a bit more fiddly, but it's it's not hard. Nice, nice. Yeah, I think uh, I think you should explain the thousand birds thing. The thousand, what is it? It's a thousand cranes, but you and your genius made a thousand birds. Well, <laughs> this is extreme technic technicalities. Um, this is origami. <laughs> it's extremely technical, so I think people need to understand this. Well, I mean, it, it's the, the thousand birds thing or the thousand cranes is. Um, I think in Japanese it's called senbatsu or something like that. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, which just means thousand cranes. And uh, I think it comes from some old legend about folding a thousand cranes and then you end up getting a wish fulfilled uh, once you've done so. And then it was popularized by um, after World War II because after the Hiroshima bomb, there was a, a little girl named Sasaki Sadako who... Died. She ended up dying from radiation poisoning um, at the hospital there. But uh, she believed that if she folded a thousand birds, she would get well. And uh, her medicine was served to her in these like small paper packets that was they were square, so she would fold one a day. But she sadly died before she was able to finish them. And hence they fold a thousand birds and they put them on the Hiroshima memorials for the 6th of uh, August each year. And this is my second time doing a thousand, I think. Uh, so what are you wishing for then? I'm not wishing for anything. Like the the, 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 the here's the here's the big secret. I'm doing it because it's a thing to do that takes time. Done. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing to do between cradle and grave. And I mean, it's right now like everyone has a fuck ton of time. So if you're bored, grab a thousand papers and get yeah. on with it. I will show people what I've been doing in time. So I got our soundboard. I went through uh, oh, Mikhail no. saying stuff at me, and I have some sounds. So first one. Why do you make me do this? <laughs> <laughs> like these, but but these are from the recordings when we when we filmed in Belfast, right? Yeah, we this freezing ones, to uh, death, basically. This very first one. Why do you make me do this? this is uh, Mikhail? I challenged him to dry scoop some creatine. Was oh, it creatine no. or something? Yeah, I, can't I remember. think I have a, a it very... was creatine that time. It was very powdery and it was, it was very blue. And the funny thing is, like, he dry scooping, if you're not familiar with supplements, is when you just put it straight into your mouth and no water. It with it's, some water. It's not yeah. great. It's not great, but you know, we've all been desperate sometimes for some pre workout. And let's face it, racking up some lines at the gym is probably not the best idea. <laughs> Depending what gym you go to, maybe it's fine in some places. But uh, so you dry scoop. But then, uh, Mikhail, this brilliant video where he's uh, blowing. Like, you know, a pre-workout is colored. So I caught the the blue fucking color come out of your mouth in this video. Yeah, it, 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 was, it wasn't pleasant. I can very clearly remember. I haven't <laughs> dry scooped many times. It's been like twice, maybe three times. And it was dreadful all three times. So like, yeah. that's a good fucking Instagram challenge for all you cunts. Go and dry scoop and see how well you hold up. Like, yeah, it needs like, to be a forget- fat ass scoop and just throw it straight in your in your mouth. And, People uh, were doing the cinnamon challenge. Don't forget that. Like at least pre-workout kind of has some sweeteners and isn't going to. Yeah, cause... but, but cinnamon challenge is old. I mean, like take the pre-workout because you will start like if you t- if you take enough, it, you're going to start coughing. That's particularly because you're going to put it in your mouth and then you're going to breathe in, and the shit is so powdered that it just like goes down your throat. And uh, well, uh, glory ensues. I, I think a few uh, people died from the cinnamon challenge. I'm sure. But then again, like, stay away from me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, God. Yeah, so that's what I've been doing with my time. 
Uh, right, so today's episode, we are going to talk about strength. Strength. And yeah, it's kind of a, what does strength mean in the context of a handstand and all the other things that go into it, I suppose, more so than anything else. It's kind of a, yes. it's, it's an interesting one because depending on which side of the debate or the topic you come from, strength is the be all and end all or technique is the be all and end all. Whereas I think uh, about me and Mikel are of the persuasion, it's more uh, nebulous and not so set up as you might think. Yeah. So I, kinda... do, I do, do think, however, like, because if you'd have to choose one, like it's, it's like that good old saying, if brute force doesn't solve your problem, your problem is that you're not using enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I think actually I got that from from the flavor text of a of a card from the trading card game of BattleTech from that I played sometime during the nineties when I was really into Magic the Gathering. Anyway, um, <laughs> it is kind of true in one sense because like no matter how well a body is placed and how precise it is, if if there is no force, uh, if, yeah. or if there if there is no energy being a, exerted to keep your body in in the position, even standing on your feet. Like it will collapse. Like the moment you die, you're not going to stand on your feet anymore because your body is no longer firing uh, any neur neur neural signals to your muscle fibers. So it's kind of like some degree of of force is necessary. I just think that like the main issue with the discussion easily becomes with stuff like handstands that is supposed to be about efficiency and so on, is that people. Yeah automatically start to relate like strength as being like a maximal strength or brute force yeah yeah it's definitely one of these things i've been using this phrase a lot i think it's very clever for myself so i'm going to be using it a lot with my uh one arm students lately it's basically it can't just look like a plane it's also got to fly like a plane <laughs> yeah and what Good this point. means is like people will get into the more pedantic ones will get into a perfect setup and then just go oh you know they're just not pushing hard enough to get the shoulder up or to get themselves lifted or to get into the balance point or the balance zone or just shit like this. And I was like, why can't I do this? It's like, well, it looks like a plane, but it's not flying like a plane. This is the kind of thing. It's like, you've got to have big fucking airplane engines at certain points mm. and that makes you efficient. And then you can glide around and be free and sore, I suppose, <laughs> is, uh, what I'm getting at. But uh, until you get those big engines to get you off the ground, sometimes uh it's limited so i suppose uh yeah it's kind of one of those things i think uh we were talking about this and in, in terms of it's always this kind of thing of like people are zoning on alignment and it's not like we dismiss it but it's also one of these things where it's like unless your shoulders can support your mass and your triceps can do a bit of work and your fingers can actually exert force into the ground you won't be able to balance a two-arm handstand and it's kind of this miscomponent yeah, yeah exactly I think I think that that is where that thing comes in that like there is a uh, all all of that all of that uh, those things that need to happen to keep you balanced uh, are like contractions of the muscles and the contractions of the muscles will be exerting force in certain directions and that force is that is strength it's just um, it doesn't necessarily relate to having like omega maximal power because you it's it's not necessarily what you need but there is a there is a baseline for the various things that you want to do that you need to have or else you simply cannot uh, execute the movement or the the balance that you you want to do so i think it, it it's i think it's it's important to speak about it in in the relevant sense and um not have this kind of strength versus technique or strength versus flexibility or whatnot kind of dichotomy because it isn't a dichotomy it's just uh strength is a parameter that is always influencing what you do within these things uh, but there are ways to mitigate how much of that absolute power you need in in certain situations um and yeah like it's and i think an another like reason for for strength being hugely misunderstood because like if if you look more kind of on like the broader sort of cultural sense, how we we tend to associate uh, with strength, like if it's about physical strength, it's kind of like uh, like what easily comes up in my mind. If I'm just gonna think very shallowly about it, is like 
big bodybuilder dude, huge muscles equals strength. Like big barbell, yeah. and because you're strong, you're automatically uh, stiff and huge and clumsy. And like these things, like they don't really have anything to do with each other. Like like people who do bodybuilding, yeah, then they lift the weights and get strong to to become enormously massive, like they do. People that do strongman. They do it for a slightly different point. Like they want to get as massive and as strong as possible, but the amount of muscle mass uh, is not necessarily the, the the same focus for them, and so on and so on. So it's just like yeah, uh, it's an it, interesting aside there actually. So I remember seeing some studies on which humans have the most body muscle, mm -hmm. and uh, the ones who were topping it out were actually sumo wrestlers. Oh yeah, they also I can had. <laughs> They proportionally had a bit more fat. They didn't. They weren't actually too fat in terms of how big you would think they might be, but in terms of, uh, I think the figure quoted was four pounds of muscle per inch was the goal, maybe or something like that. And uh, sumos were the ones who set this figure. Strongmen, like they're counting strongmen, bodybuilders, steroid users, the lot. Sumos were all actually, I don't know, they couldn't get any data as far as I could see, but apparently natural, benefit of the doubt, whatever. And yeah, they're getting the four pounds of muscle per inch. Mm. So, well, inch of height, that is, not girt. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting that, that whereas the hand balances, we, I suppose we just train to get jacked forearms. Yeah, and I, I think it's also like the the fascinating, on the other side of the coin, when you look at stuff like hand balancing, then you'll, you'll, you'll see these like, uh, you'll see all these children who do the insane things. You'll see like this like, a uh, tiny teenage girl that can stay in her hands for an hour and so on and there's no yeah. like visible defined huge muscles as like this very conventional and very boring um view of strength would have it as uh and yeah i i think that like th this also like ends up thinking that oh yeah but look at her she doesn't have massive muscles so hence it it can't take a lot of strength. I remember a guy came to me once and he said exactly that when I was doing some like really hard, like I think I was doing like lower down to crocodile on one arm or something. And he just comes yeah. to me and he says like, oh yeah, but like I said like, poch, it's so heavy. And he says, no, but that, that's not that's not strength. And I'm like, what the <laughs> hell do you mean? He, he was an acrobat and a dancer. And I'm like, yeah, this is tons of strength. I said, no, but like, haven't you seen all the Chinese tiny, tiny girls doing it? Like, <laughs> like there's no problem. And I'm like, yeah, but have you seen, like, they are eight years old and they have been trained since they were, like, t uh, since they were a few years old. And, like, body mass has an enormous amount of thing of, of say into this. And, yeah. like, of course, they are also among the most flexible people in the world, so they can mitigate a lot of the absolute power needed for a certain thing. But, like, on average, you will find smaller people to more easily excel towards higher levels of all these kind of calisthenics based things such as handstands simply because speaking like, of small and small and flexible i would actually just like to give a shout out to stephanie millinger at the moment who uh earlier oh yeah. this week or was it last week done 402 stalder presses yeah it's busted now <laughs> you know we can debate the technique whatever i don't care it's just like it's obviously one of these insane feats of endurance as well as strength, as well as flexibility, to be able to like this is the kind of thing where it all this where it all comes together. It's like you can just output that amount of work in that time. At the same time, you're using every kind of like, you know, let's face it. Once you get to rep 100, things aren't going to be pretty, but you're still doing them. Yep, it's insane. And then you'll queue up all the people on Handstand Anonymous who will just be like, yeah, I find it more impressive when I see a big guy do two of them. And you're just like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I yeah. too like to walk, watch my mother sprint 100 meters <laughs> instead of Usain Bolt. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's mother, she's very fast. But yeah, uh, it's absolutely nuts. I mean, in, in anything in like this, this, this is like the kind of stuff when you get like world class talent. Uh, uh, mixed up with extremely hard and focused training over a very long period of time, but it's just like, uh, and and it's like, it's actually a very good example uh, in terms of, um, like, for for a hundred kilo person doing that feat is is probably within 
the realm of a completely impossible for for a human muscle structure to be able to to do i mean if we're talking like like let's say a guy that's 190 tall and yeah pretty massive 100 kilos heavy like just of course like doing doing just a couple of straddle uh, stalder presses is like quote unquote impressive for such a person uh, that is that is totally legit but i mean there's that doesn't take anything away from that this yeah do, do, doing 400 presses is just completely bonkers and unachievable by like 99.9 percent of those who would ever even try to get 50 won't even get it so yeah that's the kind of thing it's like even if you take someone like let's say a genetically blessed 155 160 male and try to get them to do 100 stalders yeah like, very unlikely. it would be very rare of the amount of people you could take to do that yeah and that's just like you know and this is with training i'm sure some people will manage it you probably will start seeing more people come out now once this is kind of thing once world records get set publicly yeah people will start trying to break them which is really interesting we're looking forward to see who's going to do 500 first <laughs> but yeah i'm not sure not uh yeah, not surprised if it's her again uh the yeah, the, the, the most i've seen other than her uh was by an ethiopian sport acro girl uh i cannot find the video again she was in a like a uh women's trio um she looked like she could have been maybe 12 uh, very 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 um slim and she did 126 Th those were all straight arm like she didn't land in 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 bent arm on the bottom uh, yeah. so like there's a difference there in in terms of technique i think it that took her about 12 minutes to do or something like that um so yeah. like i mean there are certainly more people out there and like that's also the thing you 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 never see what like the the kids in this in the chinese circus schools what what they do because like they have so many that are like so far ahead of anything that we see in Europe and the States usually like apart yeah. from a few individuals from Kiev and, and, and Russia, but like they're basically mass producing a lot of these absolute monsters over there. So, um, yeah, I remember one of my friends, I got to know this uh, Chinese juggler who was living in Ireland 20 years ago and he was a interesting guy. Really nice. He was juggler. Juggling was a thing. But he was an absolute fucking machine on anything. Like just anything. He could tumble, do doubles, do straps, do one arms, whatever. And he was just saying like the time in circus school, they just have to do like a hundred presses. Mm. And yeah. if they didn't do them fast enough, they had to do a hundred more or a thousand push ups and mm. shit like this. And yeah. you're just like you know, it's just, you know, whatever. It's insane. It's the fact that they even like pull these numbers out. And it wasn't just like a challenge thing, it's just like it's now Friday, 4 p.m. You do your thousand push ups. If you're not finished by 5 p.m., you do a thousand more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so crazy. But but yeah, like getting getting back on kind of the the strength topic as well, like uh on I mean there are many many angles to to see it from, but I think like the the thing that you mentioned in the beginning that like uh un, unless there is enough de facto force going through your shoulders to hold your body in a specific position you will fall that down from that position and i think that the the earliest of course and most like in many cases most relevant point of this is uh, for for complete beginners who want to learn to stand on two arms because i mean i remember i had a workshop i was in cork in ireland um yeah and it was a great workshop um and there was a lady that was there. She was like in her sixties, maybe. Uh, yeah. Like she was not in particularly like high level of fitness at all. She's very enthusiastic, and she really wanted to learn. And I had a group of of mainly people that like everyone could hold their weight on their arms uh, for the uh, for the duration of the workshop, more or less. Like people were knackered yeah. after, but they 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 could spend a few hours working towards the wall. And for her, like getting up to the wall was like a one RM. It was, it, it could happen, yeah. but she couldn't get into like a fully inverted position. And I think this is extremely important to remember that like there are many people who would love to learn to handstand that are in that boat. Like she, she did not have the physical capacities at that point to do a lot of work on her hands. But of course she was in my workshop and it was my responsibility to make sure that she left there with knowledge and 
training and understanding of what to do. So of course for her, like she did a lot of stuff like headstands. I gave her various drills like L holds uh, uh, with the, with the feet on top of a box, like starting to gradually get more and more weight over the hands, uh, and kind of assuring her that like through practice, like she can she can learn it because she was already like sort of able to hold her weight, but like there was there, there was far from enough yet for her to have any kind of handstand practice. So. So like I told her even stuff like, yeah, for you, like it would be really good to just like general increase of physical fitness, like learning to do push-ups, et cetera, et cetera, just to, to make sure that yeah. there is just enough, uh, there is enough force to hold your, your, your body up in these positions. And same thing with like the forearm, like the, the grip, like there's so, so many times that I've seen people like, I hear people, oh yeah, I tried just to handstand for several years and it's impossible. And like I get them up and like ask them to grip the ground with their fingers and there's nothing happening. And yeah. like then it doesn't matter how many times I try to cue them technically do this to that. There isn't enough energy in their hands. Their, the forearm flexors are not strong enough to do the given task. Hence, it's better to then uh, give the person something that will basically just increase the force production there. And then later on, they can use that force production to actually perform like to learn to perform the skill. Yeah, that was an interesting point just to cycle a bit back to that lady is what we are doing in handstand training, if we were to speak in sports science terms, is specific physical preparation. We are preparing the body to perform a very specific feat, which is the handstand, whatever level we're working at. And what we also have is off-season training or general physical preparation where we're trying to make the body just generally strong and increase this is the kind of thing gpp is actually quite spp as well because the gpp you would use to do athletics is probably very different than what you would do for the gpp for ballet for example but it's still the same idea that we we're trying to just increase strength increase cardio generally around the body make sure that there's no imbalances and create flexibility all these kind of things can be raised as kind of they're almost like this is the thing gpp is almost quant well it is quantifiable to a large degree, it's like I have picked my metrics, volume, time on the tension, total weight lifted per session, density of the session, whatever we're looking at in terms of strength, and we will try and raise that capacity over the course of a training period, be that either two weeks, three weeks, one week, a day, six months, whatever. And then we will have specific physical preparation. We'll be then taking those gains and realizing them into our practice. So this is where things can be a bit nebulous because obviously in sports we have like, oh, you know, there's performance on the day, there's head games that go into this as well. There is also, you know, peaking. There's also just like, well, I am stronger, but, you know, it's that thing of uh, I can make the muscles stronger, but then I need to teach them what to do. Mm. This is uh, the rehab conundrum. It's like the classic thing, not that I believe it, but my glutes are weak, so my back is sore. Well, we get the glutes stronger. It's like, shit, your back is still sore. Why? Because you didn't teach the muscles what to do in the right way. Oof, that's why I, I'm not even sure that's even valid anymore. But anyway, you get what I'm getting at. Mm. Uh, but it's one of these things of like, we're trying to get the body strong. Okay, so we take someone. Now, hand balance, it's interesting because it, it requires strength, but it requires a lot of specific strength. Mm. But if you don't have a baseline of strength, you can't access the specific strength. So it's kind of hermetically sealed. Yeah. So it's that kind of thing of like, oh, the strength is, it's locked away in a box and you need some kind of strength. And I kind of worked it out for myself as like, I like people who want to do hand balance and never done it before to be able to do five plus push ups, 10 body weight rows, and then, you know, planks and core and dishes and shit like that for about 40 to 30 to 60 seconds, actually, if we to be realistic. And that's the point where you can actually begin to enter the doors of hand balance training as a, Thing. And this is where hand balance training is interesting because there's the first part of handstand training for me is when we're actually just developing the strength and the basics. It lasts much longer than other people think, but it's more like strength training at that stage. Hmm. Until you are doing basically maybe 20, 30 seconds or holds, handstand training is basically strength training. Yeah, And we can look at it like if we start comparing to you know strength, strength training metrics, generally the rule of thumb is not that it's kind of, it's all kind of outdated strength stuff, but it's, the rule of thumb is strength training is up to 30 seconds. Then it gets kind of into hypertrophy or endurance training after that. 
So any kind of holds or anything where you're working up and still getting fatigued under the 30 second mark, you're still working on strength. So this is kind of what our technique is looking at. This is where our, our very basics of training come in linear progression. Mm. We come in one week, we do something the next week we want to do a bit more. We need to have this is where things get a bit confusing. We need to have accurate measures of units. And we also need to be thinking like, do we train to failure? It's not the best idea. So it's better to try find like, oh, I will do, you know, walk into the wall. I will do that in four steps. And the next week I will do it in three steps and I will hold it for five seconds. And then the week after my next thing will be to do three sets of five seconds. Okay, I can do three sets. Okay, let's add, I generally use five seconds as a baseline as a repetition for most people. So I go, okay, we're going to try and do one more repetition. So then we will do three sets and then we will do three sets of or three sets, one set of 10 seconds and two sets of five seconds. Okay, we have progression. And then the next week, maybe we'll do two sets of 10 seconds and vice versa. And then when mm. we do three sets of 10 seconds, okay, then we will aim to increase them to 15s. And this is one of the things. Now, this is where things get kind of interesting with handstands is as we gain strength, that allows us to position, as we gain strength and flexibility, it's uh, not the cotypus here, as we gain strength and flexibility, it allows us to position our skeletal structure in a fit, in a way that we can be more efficient. So we have created more efficient leverages. That means that our muscles, if they're capable of, of uh, using a, exerting a certain amount of force for a certain duration of time, will now, because of this advantaged leverage, be able to use less force. Mm. So they'll be able to survive for a long for a lesser amount of time. So this is where technique, strength, like this is where all our kind of athletic capabilities come into play is like, we're trying to find an efficient alignment, which is, involves technique and motor control. At the same time, we are trying to be strong enough that we don't fatigue. And then at the same time, as we get stronger, this allows us to be more efficient. But at the same time, maybe the strength won't fade away because then it just opens new doors where you can go, oh, I can get stronger in this direction now. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it, it's it's also like uh, as you get as you as you're able to place yourself better, uh, it by the definition also means that um, you are um, how to say like you your your reactions are faster and more precise, which means that like you like you don't let the body travel as far each time before. Um, before you start activating, for example, your fingers, which means that you don't need to squeeze as hard, which means you save more energy and so on and so on. So like that, that is where it is confusing with the strength idea for handstands because it is certainly there, but over time you want to mitigate the use of, of the, the most maximal power of it so that you can perform it with ease. Uh, and like, I always like to use the, I've probably mentioned it before in the podcast too, but uh, I like this, uh, the comparison of um, planche, uh, like planche and handstand push up on one side and the press to handstand on the other side. And yeah. those being like the, re the reasoning for that is basically that the uh, handstand push up and the planche are like now we're assuming that in planche you would be using the same kind of body position, whether that is your straddle, it is your tuck, or it is your full, whatever it is. But yeah. If if body position is kept consistent and you lean into a planche, you lean forwards, all you need to do is push hard enough into the floor so that your uh, your feet come off the ground. There's of course some technique parameters to planche too, but they're they're rather few. It's more about just apply force in the right direction. There is no mitigating factors in terms of bending at the body and so on. Like if we're trying to do it uh, with a specific body position. And that will always take the same amount of of de facto force to get your weight off the floor, unless you lose weight or unless you lose a leg uh, or unless you straddle <laughs> more or so on, right? So, but assuming you we keep the body position, it'll be the same. And the same with the handstand push up. It as as long as you don't lose weight, it'll take the same amount of de facto force to bend your arms and then straighten your arms again with with your weight on top and. Of course, again, there's some technique involved in terms of like, if you're good at doing the motion, you're not going to cause yourself loads of wobbles on the way down and on the way up doing doing a handstand push-up or a planche or a planche press. 
Um, but if we compare it to the press to handstand, like there's there's loads of mitigating factors in terms of how you're actually um, performing the press because the press, since the goal is to compress as much as possible and make the, the leverage shorter, uh, that can be achieved by higher degrees of flexibility. That can be like both in the shoulders and in, in the hips uh, and like being stronger in the midsection, ha having stronger shoulders and so on. So yeah. th this this is why it's very clear that the world record on, st on Stalder presses is over 400. Whereas like if you'd look for the world record for full planche presses, I would be surprised if that is more than like... I think I've seen 10 or so, and I'm sure like some beast out there, maybe you could do 20, but you'd never get to a hundred with that. Like, just because it's like, there, there, there is no- I feel you're gonna eat those words one day, but yeah. Yeah, if, if I do, <laughs> then I would be, that that would be extremely impressive. I mean, even even 20 full planche presses is is crazy. Some uh, Japanese, some Japanese gymnasts will pull it off. <laughs> That's what I really like about the Japanese gymnasts is they're beastly strong, not that most of their kind of high level gymnasts aren't, but they're also technical perfectionists. Yeah, they're ridiculous. Yeah, but uh, but right. uh, like yeah, just to finish up the um, uh, that rant, it's it's um, like the other thing as well. Like I said before, uh, first of all, the nature and the practice of handstands, um, due to like you you kind of the curve of it, like there is a rising curve of, of, of force required at the beginning until you reach a certain level where it starts to level off where you have the baseline and it kind of flatlines how much power you need per second to do the thing. Uh, and that flatlining is what you're looking for. Then you move to the next level and you learn something new. You might need to build more power as, as you're learning to do that new thing. Like let's say you're leaning over and doing like trying to do one arm fingertip holds, then you're then your then your shoulder must be stronger to hold ten seconds of that than it needs to be to hold ten seconds of two arms and so on and so on and so yeah. on. So that like, um, and this is also where like body structure comes a lot into play because like in handstands we're not doing a lot of like per se muscle building work where like there's loads of of hypertrophy centered work where like the point is to get as buff as possible and hence. You won't see that many hand balancers that are like absolutely stacked. Whereas if you if you take one step or like a few steps to the right and go into the um, into the calisthenics uh, circles where people all they do is planche and pull ups and front levers and muscle yeah. ups all day, they're all jacked out to all shit. Um, and basically because their their practice looks different and the the goals are different, but um, this this is also what I find fascinating is, is, is like, and where like the bot, the, I the body point to raise there actually, huh? On the being jacked. I have a point to raise there on the being jacked. Yes. Fire. And, uh, yeah, it's one of these things. There's something, you know, so if you look at say most of the hand balanced girls I can think of, or yeah, they're generally a certain specific build. They're kind of slim, kind of trim. They've got a bit of muscle, but like for a lot of time, a lot of them can be quite almost stick-like. Mm. Whereas if I think of like a lot of the majority of the hand bouncer guys I know, a lot of them are pretty muscly. Like yeah, even yourself, enough. like you're not jacked, but like you've got a big lats and big back and chest and triceps and everything. I know you work on strength stuff, but I can still think of like, you know, if I was to rate circus artists in terms of male physique, generally it would be the straps people first. And the bases. Bases, mm, bases can be hit and miss because sometimes they can just be like a stack of granite. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Just not really super cut or anything or super muscly. Just can be pretty good. Not to rip on those bases. But then it would be hand balancers after that. Yeah, yeah, you're right on that. Uh I it's think, just like, but that's only the men, whereas the girls, like if you look at, uh, say, in circus, you say aerialists, generally straps and trapeze are pretty stacked. Hoop can range a lot, but hand balance, they're generally like the smaller ones. Mm. Yeah, you, you're right on that, like on, on average. Uh, like, I guess it's also just due to like... Uh, um dudes just having an easier time building a lot of shoulder and like arm muscle in general so like just the, yeah. the general like since since ladies have like their 
isn't it around like i read something that for women there is uh like basically the the the, the size of the rib cage and shoulder structure is is more or less finished around 14 to 16 year old, years old but while for 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 the guys that's when kind of the testosterone peaks and that's when that part actually like grows significantly um yeah i think on the third growth spurt which happens in sort of towards your 20s mm. that's when yeah female hips widen at that stage the bone structure widens and men's shoulders widen chest and shoulders widen yeah yeah i guess it just like becomes kind of more pronounced to do to that and since you are also basically like hand balancers only train that area too uh yeah <laughs> that's all they ever do so uh that's put kind of all your stats into shoulders yeah but but it's still though it is quite a big disparity when i think about it yeah yeah i mean i i there there are they people come in all kinds of sizes and short and yeah. shapes within hand balancing like I, I think i think the only area where you start seeing like rather specific body structures is on on very high level stuff as in all sports i mean the yeah. higher level the the more the harder it will be for all kinds of body structures to be able to to uh, to reach certain things and that's just i mean physics yeah. and life basically but um yeah i th i think either it is like if you go towards the extremes of all the flexibility like kind of contortion balancing stuff uh yeah. you'll obviously find a lot more women um i mean i guess it's yeah. it's it's a more common um just like culturally a, a more common discipline for for girls to do than guys though there are of course in, insane guys within that too and when when you see like like all of kind of the planchy super strength stuff uh it, it's funny with that because i i've i've seen a few girls full planche it's rare but i've seen a few um there was this portuguese uh sport acro lady she was doing a it was some YouTube video some years ago. She did a full planche and she was looking at the camera and she's just shaking, but she holds it. Uh, nice. And it, it's it's legit. It's super badass. And then she also does like a straddle Maltese uh, with like fully locked <laughs> elbows and stuff. It's it's brutal. Uh, and it's brutal. And then you you see all of these kind of just like it, it's it's classic with like I think in calisthenics is where you see it the most. Like this these these like short dudes, like short Russian dudes, with like. Like they're buff, they're not like enormous, but like they just beat everyone because they're one sixty and sixty kilos and just like no legs and massive shoulders and they can basically just fly out fly from one arm basically. Yeah, I remember I was going on a calisthenic kick a few years ago and uh, I came across some Ukrainian calisthenic videos of just like dudes in I oh, don't know, some random playground. And they're all you know, most of them look like if they put on a t-shirt, you wouldn't be able to tell they train. Mm. Yet they were wrapping out one-arm chin-ups, they were doing handstand push-ups, planche, Maltese, the works. And you're just like, damn. Yeah. Yeah. I think we kind of lost our point as usual. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's 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 yeah. that's that's why you're listening, isn't it? <laughs> 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 yeah, but but yeah, I think, on, I think there's, on, there's, there's many fascinating things on on strength, and I'm like, I'm probably one of like the I'm on the larger end of uh, people that like try to push a lot of like the very heavy strength one arm handstand stuff. Um, there, I haven't really seen that many on on my height and weight uh, level that are working a lot on those things. First of all, because like if if you're if you're already working on these things in with uh, either you need to be completely obsessed about it to be able to start working on it because it's gonna take you eight years to start getting to really work on those moves uh yeah. or you're just basically like smaller and you do it in half the time or less um <laughs> but uh either it comes in six months or you spend six years working on it yeah I've, i mean I've, or I've you seen... post videos of yourself huh? on instagram or you post videos of yourself on instagram holding a post off camera and pretend to do the skill yeah that that also works um <laughs> yeah that's pretty good <laughs> we see you <laughs> but it's um yeah, it's it's like, or I I I really feel like a, a significant difference in terms of like, um, for for me to do the heavier skills, I need to be just in 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 abs on absolute point with with my shape, yeah. or else it's just not possible. Like, 
There's a couple of things that I did a few years ago that I haven't been able to replicate at all just because I was an absolute monster back then and like the stars aligned shape wise and I was able to and Jack 3D was the original formula. <laughs> no, it, it was it was way after Jack 3D actually. It was during during the dry scoop days. Uh so um, Yeah, like a, f- a few of those things like I'm not even sure if I'll ever be able to do it again. Um but it's interesting to see, like, I, I know people that are just way, like, have be- way better, like, um, physiques for those kind of things than me, that just, it it's not a problem, and, um, and it, it, in the end, comes down, again, when it comes to strength, the de facto force that a larger frame will have to have compared to someone smaller, and uh, doing certain things will be, it'll, it'll be harder, and in the same way as, as with uh, weightlifting, like, you have you have you have uh, weight classes simply because uh, someone on sixty kilos is not going to be able to lift a barbell as heavy as someone who is a hundred kilos almost by default. Um, yeah. So whereas within what we do, it's it's uh, it's uh, much more subtle because you 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 don't you you there is there are no weight categories. You just see a person doing a thing. Uh, and you have no kind of understanding of um, of who they are or like all of these these kind of physical st- stats yeah. of a person. Um, but then again, I'm kind of happy there isn't either because like going around like comparing all these things in the end, it kind of becomes nonsense and a waste of time. No, 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 no. no. I think I think you're completely wrong here. Am I I'm gonna stand up for? I think we need like a weight class, a weight and a height class, and a body density class for handstands. And then someone can do a Wilk score so we can compare your like one arm planche to the Chinese kid who can do 10 one arm planche presses and then you can feel superior because maybe your Wilks will be higher. You're fired, Emmett Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> and the power lifts know what I'm talking about. It's like, yeah, yeah, but my Wilks is better. It's like, well, that person's still stronger than you. They would still crush your skull. <laughs> yeah, then, well, then, 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 you, you, you can always pull out to the old school bullshit uh, Oh yeah, well fight me then, because if fight you lose me. in a fight, that means I'm superior to you. I don't know. Maybe we should fight. It's a great idea. Yeah, you, you'd fight. you'd probably beat the shit out of me. So, <laughs> it's the only thing I can do. <laughs> what can I do better, Mikael? Bridge. And <laughs> yeah, fight yeah, him. yeah. You you can do a better bridge, and you could beat the shit out of me. Well, I'm I'm <laughs> sure I'm sure you'd you'd murder me in deadlifts too, or anything else weight related, really. Yeah, but no one really cares about them. No. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Hold on. Stay away from me. <laughs> Stay away from me. <laughs> Which one was the soundboard? Uh, yeah, so... I'm trying to think. I was going to talk a bit about torque and why it's important. Mm? But, you know, I was going to talk about a bit of torque. And this is kind of what we're dealing with in a lot of bodyweight training. So torque is basically rotational force. Either stopping rotational force or using it. I was going to, but then I feel like maybe we probably get Doctor Helgi on to talk about torque. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's time for another Doctor Helgi episode. Maybe, but uh, yeah, we'll leave that one for a time. I think we're getting close to wrap up point. Yeah, but, uh, definitely. But like, yeah. I mean, to to sum up a few of the things, it's just like basically when speaking about hand balancing uh, and other acrobatic or athletic disciplines as well. Well, that like. Strength is very relevant, but like the definition of strength is maybe the one that needs to be discussed specifically in in the context, so that it's you're actually operating um, or thinking about it in in the right way. Because there, like the misunderstandings are rampant everywhere about like not need yeah. not just not needing strength because it's this or if it's that. No, it's in it is. It's a fabrication that you can somehow use some sort of magic that makes you stay there. What makes you stay there are contractions of muscles, and those contractions yeah. need to be strong enough uh, in their specific context. And like what what I like to use as um how to say a definition is like strength more as kind of the the body's ability to exert force in a specific situation. And this is like yeah. this is what Emma talked about with the SPP, was it? Yeah. yeah. Specific physical preparation. Yeah, you, you you need to have worked up up to it very specifically. And I mean, 
what what would make me think the most about if I went to another discipline and tried to use my strength for climbing, for example, my forearms are pretty damn well conditioned to do handstands, but put me on the climbing wall and I'm suffering within 10 minutes because like it's different. And you could yeah. put a climber who is who is a monster and you put him on a handstand and they, they will struggle to do the finger corrections because it's a new it's a new context. And perhaps learning like these disciplines, there will be some sort of carryover since you're uh, like there is a like at least a some level of general physical preparation coming from your special physical preparation that like a climber will have uh, more force recruitment from their forearms than someone who never squeezed anything other than a pen in their life. But um, still, like yeah. we need to to teach the muscles what to do uh, with the power at hand. But unless the power is at hand, well, it needs to it needs to first be built somewhere, or else you're just going to waste a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> bam. Up nicely. Mic bam. drop. Mic drop. Hold on. Why do you make me do this, Emmett? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you make me do this, Emmett? <laughs> <laughs> so we have our kind of definitions. I suppose it's yeah. I was gonna say basically, it's that thing. Technique is like the aim. It's basically the, your bullseye. You can aim with your technique, but you still need to like shoot the arrow. Yep. Shooting the arrow is the strength. And if you haven't got boat, you ain't got no target. Indeed. Indeed. So I think we'll wrap it up there. Yes. Yeah, I think that was a bit of a ramble cast. Hope everyone followed along nicely. We were talking about strength in a specific physical context and all those things. Uh, other than that, as you know, the Handstand cast is supported by Handstand Factory. If you like our rambling and wish to continue, please uh, check out our courses on handstandfactory.com. Uh, other than that, uh, if you have questions for our podcast where we answer your questions, please send them to us at Handstand Factory on Instagram or either directly to me and Mikhail as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other than that, we will catch you next week. And thank you for listening. Cheers. Stay away from me. <laughs> you. <laughs>